afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today I'm going to be talking about self-help. And there's a lot of self-help books out there and stuff like that. But today we're going to talk about how you can use uh, self-help to treat depression through exercise and healthy eating. Um, in the old days before Freud, we had um, we didn't have like uh, self-help exercise books on the internet to find out what we can do to treat ourselves and we relied on other people. But before there was Freud, uh, who discovered how to the inner sanctions of our mind and what went on our psyche and stuff like that, they just looked at people and said that they were weird or different and stuck them in those asylums or lobotomized them, put them in isolation. A lot of them committed suicide or they either put them in jail or prison because they didn't know how to treat the depression in those days. So after Freud and other psych psychiatrists, the pharmaceutical industry say, oh, this will be something for us to get into to make money. So research went into the brain. You know, brain up there. And then there's little bees in the brain. So the pharmaceutical went into the brain and they did a lot of research on it. They found out that serotonin and the release of endorphins help uh, you stop from being depressed and help you be happy. Endorphins make you happy. A lot of people exercise to their tilt, their full, every day, every day, and they're always happy all the time. They're being happy all the time because they're constantly breathing the endorphins. There's a lot of exercise and stuff that can help you. That also serotonin in the brain um, creates, um, if you don't have a level of release, it can cause a lot of problems like. Um, you can become depressed because it's not making your body motivate and think functionally and stuff like that. And also they find out serotonin also has a problem with um, uh, Parkinson's disease. You know, part of, so there's serotonin. So they said, okay, let's say, make some drugs for these, these things like that. But you know, from past experience that the pharmaceutical companies are only in it for the make of money and then they find out 10 or 15 years later that it actually increased suicide or it didn't work and you're constantly having to change the drugs and stuff like that. And you have some serious side effects too. Like I know, for instance, I'm just using myself as an example. I took that one that um, Lyric, I think it is, and I actually had nightmares about killing them. I was like, mm -hmm. they have them and cut them out. I'm like, oh no. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one I was like, oh no, but I had the same side effects. So people don't want to take those. They don't want to be bothered with your side effects, even though they're not depressed anymore. So when you're having dreams about killing people, you're not depressed, but you're not happy either, right? And you're like, oh, well, you're scared of yourself now. So how can we treat depression without chemical drugs? Well, you can do it by healthy eating and by exercising appropriately. So how does the body interrupt the response to depression? The ex exercise fills the body with this energy, and increases the hunchback syndrome, sleepiness, low levels of energy, and weight gain. A lot of people come home from work, and all they want to do is sit in front of their TV and relax. Okay? That's fine, but they need to remember to get up after they finish eating and go take that, what they used to call a constitutional, which is where they used to walk around the block, and then they come home, and then they feel a lot better, and usually it makes the body have movement. Okay? A lot of people would be able to go to the bathroom after this. So that's why it's important for you not just to come home and just sit there and watch TV and eat and fall asleep. It's important for you to have some kind of exercise or activity, um, not too, not too uh, um, exercise-wise because you might get too active and then you won't be able to fall asleep. It cleanses the body by increasing your blood flow, which clears out the toxins that can trigger depression. And exercise improves your mindful, mindful that makes sure the body feels stronger and healthier. I know I've been, since I've been active in this job that I'm doing right now, I have a lot more energy and I have lost some weight um, just to feel better about myself. It enhances, the med enhances meditation to strengthen the respiratory system and control your breathing. So if you exercise and you control your breathing, you're actually with your breathing deeper and stronger, you're getting more oxygen into your blood flow and not just the carbon monoxide just staying in there. And you clear out the carbon monoxide and increases it and it goes and you're getting more oxygen to different parts of your body and your brain so you're not so um, depressed.
Can, can healthy eating lead to the eating depression? Of course it can. Because exercise, exercise makes the body crave healthy foods. I know since I've been exercising, I've not been wanting to eat the grab the potato chip bag or the cheeses, you know, they are my favorites. Um, but I've been eating more healthy foods like zucchini and celery um, and fresh fruits and vegetables and not so much, not so many bread items or pasta items. So, and it also ensures that uh, healthy nutritional foods and vegetables should feed your body because you have to feed your body. If you don't get those nutritional foods, then you're not feeding your body and this stuff not going to the right places. Other benefits to the exercise. Exercise is a sleep regulator. And if you're prone to sleep during bedtime and you try not to exercise before bedtime, it might keep you up. Like I said, if you exercise too much before bedtime, so try to exercise like maybe an hour or two before you go to bed. That way, when you go to bed, you feel like, oh, I'm ready for bed, but you're not too tired, but you're not wide awake, so you can't fall asleep. And exercise also makes you look younger and healthy. It, it makeovers on shows that use exercise are like, um, does anybody see the, um, The body show where they use all that weight. Biggest loser? The biggest loser. All the time they show you how you exercise and stuff like that. But they actually do make, they don't show you the part where they're actually doing the tummy tucks and, the, and doing the lapectomies and pulling the skin up and pulling the skin off their arm because they they just can't, sometimes like at my age, it, the skin doesn't go away, it just stays there. But they do all the makeovers that they actually look younger. And as their faces look younger, they haven't done anything to their faces, their faces look much younger after they've been exercising all those months. And the types of exercise for depression, there's two different kinds. There's the anaerobic and there's the aerobic. The anaerobic can promote strength and speed with power weights and short distance running. That means where you don't like run a whole mile, but you might just jog around the block a couple times or something like that. And aerobic improves the oxygen system like jogging, biking, and brisk walking. And the recommendation for the depression program is that a combination of both things, at least 20 minutes a day, switching them up daily. Um, to sit, and I had a friend that, when I was like in the 20s, and he would go and he would do his uppers one day and his lowers the next day. And on Sunday, we had these stairs, these, these football stadiums, and he was like straight up like this, and he would run up and down those stairs. So that's how he did his uppers, lowers, and, his, and his stuff. But for us, it would be 20 minutes. You don't have to do it like you did for me. That's part of it. Consider joining a gym, hiring a trainer at the gym, or consider a home gym, or doing a combination of all of those. Complete your workout exercise, and like I said, do up in one day and lower the next day, and try walking on the seven steps. We had like an hour glass of food. <laughs> So exercise your way into better health and be depression free. Any questions? Um, we have something there about. Yeah. The question is, how does increased blood flow take out toxins from the body? Because you're, getting you're bringing in more fresh oxygen and you're getting rid of the carbon monoxide in your body. The more oxygen you have in your body, it pushes out the toxins that are there. Because you might have like, like some people have uh, blood clots and stuff like that, but the oxygen helps the air pushes it out. The fresh air pushes, the oxygen pushes it out, pushes the carbon monoxide out, because carbon monoxide is poison to the body. So you want to get that out. So you want to be able to deep, breathe deep breath to get more oxygen in your body, pushing out that carbon monoxide. If you have any questions, you can go to the website. It's called uh, uh, Depression Health Exercise for Depression. It's called www.depressionselfhelpinfo.com. And they have a whole list of uh, other programs and what, you can, what the foods and stuff that you can eat and other uh, self-help exercises. Thank you. Thank you.